was still in the hospital. And I'll give you an update on that at the end of this video. Okay, this is a really cool hack. If you actually spin the back element of your ND filter, or the part connected to the lens, it'll actually still act as a polarizer, therefore cutting down on your reflections. That is pretty awesome. I was planning on doing the video about in-camera transitions this week, but then we went to the hospital and I need a second camera for that and I don't have one with me. And so I was gonna do the video about vintage lens and then I realized that I only have one of the three vintage lenses that I wanted to feature in the video. So I'm just gonna do a video on this lens, which I think is a really good option if you have an M50 or any APS-C full frame mirrorless, pretty much any camera, this is a great lens. And the lens that I'm using right now is a Tamron lens, and it's a 28 millimeter f2.5. Now what Tamron actually did back in the day is they created a series of lenses called adapter lenses, and this is the second series, so it's adapter 2. In fact, the entire number combination is a Tamron 28 millimeter f2.5 B bar MC Adaptol 2 lens. If you want to look it up, that's the exact lens that I have. And what Tamron did is back in the DSLR days, they made a lens with swappable mounts so that you could use this lens on different cameras. And I got this one in a Nikon mount when I had my Nikon D3300. Now I don't have the camera anymore, but I still have some of the lenses and they'll adapt over to my M50. And I haven't used them much mainly because with the M50 doing vlogs, I tend to shoot wider focal lengths and 28 millimeters on a crop sensor body is more like, I don't know, 40 millimeter? And so I haven't wanted to use it. But when I got the speed booster, that changed it. Now it's no longer a 28 millimeter on a crop sensor body, but it's more of like a 20 millimeter on a crop sensor body. So right now with the speed booster, this lens is basically the equivalent of having a 20 millimeter F1.8 on my M50. So that is like a great, not super wide, so it doesn't have the really distorted feel, but it's not the best for vlogging. But the lens only cost me a hundred bucks at the time, and you can get them for cheaper now. Right there, this lens, even though it's not super wide, it's wide enough that I could vlog in lower light environments. Of course, it's manual focus, by the way. It's manual focus. But I could vlog in lower light environments and get usable footage with low ISOs because it's pretty much a 1.8 aperture, which is amazing having a low light vlogging lens for the M50 for 250 bucks. One advantage of this over getting something like the Samyang or Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 is that I can adapt it over to the M50 with a regular adapter. And basically just by switching out the adapters, I have two different focal lengths. <sighs> now I have a vlogging dilemma that I haven't talked with you guys about as of yet. And that question is, should I get a new and better lens for my M50? Or should I get a one wheel? I'm trying to figure out which one would actually help my channel more. I hope this audio doesn't turn out too bad. It's really windy out here. Now there's some stuff that's super nice about having older, more vintage lenses than using the perfect image lenses that modern camera companies are making their lenses with and that's just there's so much more character to them for example with one of the new lenses and like my kit lens you're not getting a lens filler like this another thing is that mythical idea that the m50 just has unusable 4k 
When you draw on a manual lens, one of those problems gets completely resolved. And when you put on the speed booster, the other one gets completely resolved. So you don't have a problem when you have the speed booster and manual lenses using the 4K on this camera. So I just realized I'm on a skateboard and I can't hold two coffees and the camera and skateboard at the same time. Update from the last clip that you saw, breathing tubes out. And back to the lens. There are a few reasons why I absolutely love this lens. And one is when you pair it up with the speed booster, it's wide, like I was saying earlier. I mean, you get a wide, fast lens, but then you can also throw on a regular adapter and you have a tighter lens that's still pretty fast. I mean, 2.5 is much faster than a 3.5 aperture. You get basically two focal lengths just by switching out the adapters. Now for the M50 particularly, for someone like me who uses the kit lens, this lens has a 49 millimeter filter thread. So it uses the same filter thread as my kit lens and my 50 millimeter f1.8. So basically I haven't had to get a new ND filter because all of the lenses that I use regularly have the same filter thread. Now, one thing I want to remind you is this is a manual focus lens. And so when you're vlogging with this, you have to vlog in manual focus. This lens has a lower contrast. Now, I will say like I showed with that flare, this thing flares like crazy. And so you probably need some sort of a hood for it or something. I used to have a pop out hood, but I, I broke it after using it so much. It's not an insanely sharp lens, but I am not a big fan of the overall sharp images that are coming out of cameras these days. Now, the thing about a lens like this, and I realized this watching A Bridge Too Far, one thing I realized, well, besides realizing that it had a lot more foul language than I remembered, but one thing I realized was the imperfection of the shot. So often, one shot to the next, the movie was not consistent. Colors would be off, there would be weird artifacts all over the place. But yet, when you watch that movie, the cinematography, the storytelling, all of it was incredible. And they told an amazing true story very well without having the picture-perfect images that we're getting out of modern cameras. And this gives you more of that vintage camera feel. And there's a misconception when it comes to cinematography. When we say cinematic, often we're talking about that buttery slow motion, you know, what we think of when someone makes a video about how to do a cinematic B-roll segment. But cinematic merely means having the qualities of the cinema. And you know what? Having imperfect lenses often gives you more cinematic qualities of the cinema in your footage. If you're looking for a good lens for your M50 that's going to give a different image, it's totally different image. It's a fun image to play with actually in post. I highly recommend this 28 millimeter lens and the speed booster, just a bonus. I know this video wasn't really complex, but obviously I'm still in the hospital, hoping to get out of it in the next couple of days. We ended up being in here a lot longer than we thought. So by the time you're watching this, we've been in here for at least nine nights and eight days. So I didn't really have the ability to do a more complex video, but I hope you enjoyed this video anyway. If you found it helpful, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I'll see you next week.